Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today's little project we'll be building two snake cages. The lady of the house has got a little corn snake that had babies last year, and all of the rest are sold off except two one for the little man and one for her. So we, they are in need of cages right now. I think this project is going to be one of those time lapse deals. A lot of monotonous work, a lot of repetitive work, but uh, let's see what we can get out of it. Okay, so let's stop tools. First one is obviously your brain. Use it. Second one, your hands. Look after them. No replacement spares on it. Thirdly, it's patience. Don't rush a job the first time just to do it over in decent the second round. Then we get to all of this. Now, first of all, we need to mark and measure. For that, I used a steel rule, tape measure, combination square, pencil, scribe, and then I've got this little engineering square, which is not really necessary, but it, it, it works nice. Then after that, we'll be using the drill to drill the holes, uh, pneumatic screwdriver to set the screws. Now you can replace these with uh, with anything you've got. I'll go through a, an alternative tool list just now. Then once we've got all of that together, we're going to use the random orbital sander, the uh, jigsaw to cut off some of the odd pieces. Uh, then we've got the hot glue gun and then consumables, wood glue, screws, etc. Along with that, we've got some sandpaper, file here and there, uh, axle, paintbrush to do the finishing, and a screwdriver just to just to finish things off. Now I know it's disheartening looking at guys on YouTube and seeing all their tools. Um, for instance, I use the air tools because I've got air in the shop. Uh, don't be mistaken; you need a big compressor for it. Actually, you won't get a, a DIY compressor big, compressor big enough to keep up with these things. Uh, AVE did a decent video not too long ago, uh, go and check it out, it's, it's really eye opening. Uh, but like I said, especially you youngsters out there, uh, you start off you haven't got a lot of tools, it's disheartening I know, uh, but start somewhere. Take your allowance, take a portion of your allowance, forget about the fancy shoes, buy tools. For the older guys I always say teach your, teach your kids to like the shop and like the tools and they'll never have money to do stupid things. Uh, but that being said, for the youngsters out there, we can replace a lot of these with easy to get, fairly cheap tools. Uh, as always, try and buy the best quality tool that you can. Um, I've replaced tools over and over again. Some tools, I know, some tools are not worth uh, paying the snap-on type prices. Uh, I still think it's ridiculous. But yes, uh, if it's something that you're going to use often, buy the best that you can afford, otherwise you will be buying a second one not too long in the future. Uh, for all the guys that hasn't, uh, that hasn't got a lot of tools, we can for instance, uh, let's start here at the bottom. You don't, do not need a random orbital sander, we can get rid of that one. Just gonna, just gonna use some sandpaper and take some time. That's, that's the other thing, patience, patience, patience. Then, the jigsaw. Now I've had the boards cut uh, at my local supplier, that means I don't have to have a fancy table saw, um, skill saw, whatever the case may be. The jigsaw is just for, for smaller portions as you'll see in the videos, uh, but it's not required so it's not necessary to have that one here. But we need, do need a saw so you can replace that with this one, works just as well. Hot glue gun, nice to have, not necessary. Can take that one out, replace that with some normal contact adhesive. Uh, also, I think that it, it, it helps, but you can get away with with some other ways and means. Uh, just think about it. But I'd, I'd keep this one here. Yeah. Uh, the drill and the pneumatic screwdriver. I'm not saying that you do not need it, but you can replace that with any battery operated. Uh, type drill slash screwdriver. Drill that these are miscellaneous, you can easily get all of them from your nearest hardware store. Screwdriver stays, paintbrush stays, file stays. Uh, you do not need the little engineering square. I think you can get away, easily get away without that. And yeah, I think that's basically the baseline tools. Well, steel you can get away with, replacing it with whatever you've got. Uh, or just use a portion on your combination square. 
and then we've got some miscellaneous wood glue screws whatever the case may be uh, that you need it's really not a too heavy project I've got the belt sander you can get away without the belt sander using the file like I said sanding paper in hand goes far it just takes some time uh, and then last but not least some clean rags so that's basically the, basically the do list um, you'll see where we use what as we go along so let's get right into it Now I'm putting some scrap wood underneath uh, as just to get everything sorted and make sure we don't drill into the table. Uh, always a good thing, especially if you've got a steel table like this one. Uh, but even if you've got a wooden wo a wood working bench, you don't want to be drilling into it. So it always helps just just lifting it a little bit off the off the table. Okay, so it always helps to think your project through before you're building it and not as you're going along. For instance, I'm going to sand off all the boards now because once I've got it all together, I won't be able to be able to sand it off in, into the corner. So the next round will be sanding off all the boards. So you see I'm not sanding it uh, mirror flat, we're not going to do a French polish on it, the lady of the house still wants a bit of a rustic feel to it. That's partly why we use the shutter ply, it's not marine grade ply, it's actually cheap. Uh, that's the second reason, it's because of the price. Uh, so I'm not going to be too worried about getting it absolutely flat because it's bad wood, as to, uh, well it's not A grade to start with. So we just want to get all the bad marks out, pencil marks off, etc. And that'll be enough.
Okay, so now that we've got everything sanded fairly flat, like I said, it's not going to be a French polish, but uh, nonetheless, uh, no need to do half work. Um, we can start assembling now. This is where you should make sure that you have everything in place. Uh, I've checked this off of camera, and one of the boards, uh, it's somewhere I messed up with my measurements. So I had this cut basically a little bit too wide on this side, so I'm going to have to take off that. Uh, just a quick sand on the belt sand, but we can start with none the next. Uh, first of all, we've got one one of the top ends or bottom ends, or as you know, and then a back side. Now, as you put it together, you don't want to work yourself into a corner. So what we'll do is we'll start off with that, uh, fixing this on, on this side, and then we can, oh, maybe I should just turn it around. Uh, So what we'll do is we'll start out on this corner joint here, uh, get that all together so then we've got a, uh, a side to work on and then we'll bring in the two bottom sides and then put on the top uh, on the last row. And it just makes it easier if you, otherwise you, you tend to box yourself in if we would put this side on second, uh, you're going to battle to get the end plates in. So, so think it a bit through and make sure that you've got everything in place. But, so, but other than that, let's start off by getting this all together. These days I'll invest in a chop saw uh, and hopefully we can then work this out. Let's get a fresh edge. I'll be sanding them off on the belt sander so I like to start off with a new square fresh edge. Just make sure that we've got everything, especially when you're sawing by hand.
Yeah, normally you see they have a bit of a deeper edge here, but we're going to stay with that. I think it just gives it a little bit more uh, space to look into and, and actually see the little snake in, in its new habitat. Um, so that's why I opted for the 40 millimeter edging instead of instead of the uh, normal 100 sort of scenario. I think that's that for tonight. Uh, we'll carry on tomorrow. And let's see, you know, I've got to go and feed the little man, so let's see where we go. I got these little ventiles, uh, and initially I wanted to use round ones, but I got these and I think they'll, they'll fit in nicely here, so I'm just marking them out, making sure that everything's in place. And then we can carry it on. Cut the uh, hole a bit light, uh, smaller than it should be. Oh, yeah, this is a prototype that I'm working on. Uh, watch out for future video of this thing. And now I'm just gonna use a carbide, cheap carbide bit just to edge it off and, and get it nice and square. There's one on the inside as well, but I just need to check if it fits. And we are sorted. Okay, so this is how far we've come with the uh, ventilation holes. I think this video is getting a bit winded and long. We'll make it a part to doing the rest of it. So look out for that one and I hope you enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, subscribe. I uh, always enjoy the comments. Thank you very much.